Well, before we get started, I think I just have to drop a little bit of an explanation for yesterday's video. It was late and that was not the intention. It had in fact rendered at 4K, which is what I wanted, but the file became corrupted after, after yeah, basically like almost a four hour render. It became corrupted. It, it takes a long time when you do long ass videos like that at 4K. So I had to kind of do it, you know, knock it down to 1080. And the reason why the mole isn't in the video is because we haven't seen the mole yet. You can't buy the mole. So we'll do the mole when the mole is purchasable. But today we are going to be doing the alien starships. And it's kind of a mixed bag. There's going to be some harsh opinions uh, delivered to some of these ships. Maybe not the ones that you think. It's probably going, some of this is going to come out of left field, but there's also going to be some positives. And I think there are, there are some strong contenders from the alien manufacturers and some strong future potential. But without any further ado, the alien manufacturers. What do I think of them and what do I think of their ships more specifically? Now, I think that what the easiest one to deal with the elephant in the room on this channel, as always, is the Prowler. The Prowler, of course, there are the obvious things, you know, the obvious points that I've made about the visuals on the outside of the ship. And I still stand by everything that I said. And I, over two years, for those of you who are familiar with this channel and familiar with the story, know that I kind of proved my point in a, in, in, in a roundabout kind of way that took two years. But yeah. Um, in terms of the ship itself, there are so many things right with this concept. There, you know, looks aside, let's take that, we know what that is, shelve it, dealt with. Because that doesn't affect the core idea that is the ship, the foundation of the ship, and the execution of the ship. And frankly, it is probably one of the best executed ships in Star Citizen. The idea of being able to land ground troops at a ship, at a, you know, a shipwreck or somewhere on a moon at some kind of secret installation. This is, so, this is a reality that a lot of players face every day when they're in the game. And the ability to kind of do it in a stealthy way, to kind of slip someone in very quietly and then slip out. That sort of thing is obviously going to be very valuable. You we're talking once again about an open world PvP game right you can't underestimate the threats that you're under if you do then you're probably going to end up being one of those people who spends more time whining on the forums than actually flying their spaceships the prowler is a ship that solves a lot of these problems and solves it very well now recently we, of course we saw the prowler on atv or not atv whatever they call it now doesn't matter um and it looked really really good the core parts of the ship that we want to be there, the parts of the ship that were originally sold to us, which very often can be eroded away as a ship goes to flight ready, largely remain intact. The core idea is the foundation of the ship is largely intact. And to be perfectly honest, I mean, you're not buying a ship like this because, oh, can I use it to shoot down, you know, a Bengal? No. Am I, can I use this to, you know whatever shoot down every fighter in the game no you're buying it to be able to get around in the game without being seen and to do so with weapons equipment armor this is going to be i think a very valuable ship to have the only downside that i really see in a material way with the ship of course is the price tag 425 currently Though in the future, if you're watching this video, it may be very, very different. As you can see, the ship is being built and therefore likely to be flight ready. I would say probably, I, I mean, I know what the roadmap is going to say, but at the latest, I would say June at the earliest, obviously. Uh, March, end of March, beginning of April. But... Honestly, I think that that's kind of it's the price tag that really kind of pushes me away from the ship I mean, there are so many things that I really like about it, but that price tag it just it bites 
but at the same time, you know, if it, this was sold as a $325 ship, I would already own it. I would literally already own this ship, but it isn't. It's 425 bucks. Now, if you're going to drop 425 fresh dollars on the ship to get it without LTI, I don't know about that. But if you already have a ship that you're getting rid of and you already have this money put into something else, as you know, like I have been looking at the hammerhead and wondering if that was not just a little too ambitious. Something like this might make a lot more sense and that would kind of give me some money to play around with after the fact and give me a much more sensible ship. I don't know. So this is going to be an ongoing debate for quite some time. Or actually, no, not quite some time because, you know, this is going to be the last sale before flight ready and so that window may be closing before we may see a price increase. So something to think about. So from there, we're gonna move on to the Xeon ships. Now we've talked about a ship that has a lot of potential and a lot of great things going for it. Now we're gonna talk about another ship that had a lot of potential and had a lot of great things going for it and ultimately came into the game as a dud. And that is my once beloved Xeon Scout, <clears throat> pardon me, um, or car to all as you may describe it. I know I'm, I'm going to pronounce Xeon incorrectly according to some. So the Xenon Scout. Um, it was originally sold as a six gun light fighter. Then it was down to a four gun two seated light fighter. And then it was reduced to a completely neutered two gunned one seater. And I mean, it presents so much forward surface area it literally does not have the maneuverability to really sustain itself in any kind of combat. Well, it's not really a light fighter, it's a scout. And it's not that much of a scout either. I mean, it's basically, in the current game, it is basically a free kill. There was so much potential with this to be a really cool, really gnarly kind of ship. And it just ended up being so garbage in so many areas. I mean, this is literally a perfect example of what happens when you go for nothing but art and put us up, put aside every single other consideration. If you, if you're just trying to create a beautiful art object and you do not care about the practical aspects of this ship in the game universe whatsoever, this is what happens. How many of these do you see in the universe? Not that many. And that's the reason why, because it's a shit fighter and it was, it, it was, it's visually striking, even though it's a lot more insect like now, which they seem to be course correcting. We'll get to that in a minute, but it, it has become so garbage as a fighter that it's, it's so sad because this could have been something so cool. This could have been something really, really great, but it was it was mismanaged like crazy and by the time it got to the players there was no chance to go back and correct all the mistakes that were made with this ship but here comes the santaki eye now this is the medium xeon fighter or xenon or whatever and this seems to have corrected a lot of of the problems with the Xeon Scout, which unfortunately the Xeon Scout is never going to see the benefits of, as you know, given the production schedule and the constraints and the pressures that we're under, let's be realistic, the Xeon Scout's never going to get fixed. This seems to be the move to correct those problems. The large and prominent fin has been angled backwards to present less forward surface area to shoot at. The wings are still there, but that seems to be gone. The weaponry is actual weaponry. It has four size three guns and missiles as well. It has all the benefits of these angling thrusters, which I'm sure are going to, you know, they're going to be strong they're, and they're going to be weak and strong and weak as the ship kind of moves through its evolution. But, and as the game's flight engine evolves as well, but as a six degrees of freedom fighter, as a, you know, a circle strafer, this is probably going to be a very strong ship. 
I really like this. I like the original Xeon Scout. I like this as a step to correct the mistakes that were made with the Xeon Scout. And I think that this is probably going to be a very strong fighter in the future. But how strong that that remains to be seen until we have a practical version that we can play around with in the game and we have a a flight engine that is anywhere near concrete and finished we will be able to better judge this but I still think that this is probably what holds out hope that a POA can make something other than a fantastic space bike speaking of which the Knox now the Knox is something that has been deeply troubled in the past it has technical issues within the game these are not relative to the ship's design or its artistic choices these are technical problems in the game that have to be overcome with how space bikes handle and the Knox unfortunately um, has not benefited from the new changes as much as say the drake dragonfly has and i'm told that it handles a lot better now i don't own one but i think that obviously that's a problem that's going to get resolved the f the flight problems with this bike are going to be problems that are going to get resolved and so largely i think that you're gonna see this become a worthwhile thing to own and stylistically it's amazing it is gorgeous it is absolutely gorgeous the only reason i chose the dragonfly over this is because the dragonfly can carry a little bit of cargo that's it that's that was literally what you know that was the that was literally the dividing line otherwise i would own these i would have turned my dragonflies into these these things are stylistically amazing absolutely amazing and i think that right now this is like the one pillar in the game that truly holds a poa up as a manufacturer because the santaki yet to be seen and the car to all the literal digital embodiment of erectile dysfunction right there so the nox the most solid thing that a poa makes currently and probably for a little while yet now the van dual ships we're gonna knock this one out fairly quickly where you putting the glaive up on screen right now the picture of the glaive um i did own a glaive at one point it was an enjoyable ship to fly stylistically these ships have always improved and of course they are going to feature very prominently in squadron 42 so you know that these ships are going to get a lot of attention and the glaive, I think, is kind of the most attractive of them all. And I, I have frequently wrestled with the temptation of getting the glaive back, you know. It is one of the, one of the more tempting ships. If I was going to get a fighter, it would be kind of like, it would be nice to have a fighter that is, uh, you know, that looks as sexy as the glaive does. Ultimately, I don't know where that's going to fall. I have flown the blade um, in previous iterations of Star Citizen when it became kind of like a subscriber ship so I had access to it for a month and the blade was brutally disappointing um, the blade was I mean it was it's we're talking once again about an early version of Star Citizen things could change we're not you know we're talking about the previous flight model to the one that we have currently but when I initially flew the blade, I was brutally disappointed with it. It was horrible. It was a horrible ship to fly. But, you know, you're, once again, we're talking about a ship that doesn't have a UI that really works. And the ideas behind it may have not been the greatest. So if these ships are available to you and you're thinking about it, I think that the future for the Van Duel uh, ships is going to be bright because squadron 42 is going to force them to be good but apart from that you know they're, they're obviously going to get a lot of developer attention but apart from that are they worth the price tag that's on a case-by-case -case basis that's based that's based not on me in my opinion that's based on you and your opinion of the ship the banu defender okay so the banu defender you know we have talked about on this channel quite extensively 
And when I was at the trade show, of course, I went and I got into the cockpit of it to see the view out. And of course, with the arms angled down, the view out is fine, but it's more about with the arms angled up. And from what I've seen of other people flying it, it is really just not all that impressive. It seems like a ship that... I would say the idea behind it is good. The theory behind it is good, but there's missing parts to this equation. How does this interact with the ship that we're about to talk about, the Banu Merchantman? How does this interact with that? How does this guard it on long trade flights when it is a fighter and it doesn't really obey the same rules of quantum that a large trade ship does? I mean, for those of you who are not really familiar with it, a large ship will arrive at its destination out of quantum travel far quicker than a fighter will. And so if you're supposed to be escorting this ship, how does that all work? I guess we're going to have to wait and see what that interaction is once we see the, you know, the Banu Merchantman come into the game. But the Defender, once again, I feel that this is akin to the cartool in certain respects it was designed more for art and less for functionality and less for the realities of star citizen it may be simply limited to the cockpit view that might be the only impact whereas the cartool it, it, the impact is broad over the entire ship the defender may in fact be a solidly good fighter but when I hear people talking about what are the great brawling fighters, what are the great dogfighting fighters out there. I don't hear the Defender mentioned in that conversation whatsoever. Functionally, it may serve its purpose, but I don't think as far as fighters go, it's not really going to be a showstopper. And of course, you got the big drawback of those two big prongs sticking out of the front of it, obs obscuring your view. And that's something that you want to take into consideration. All right, and finally, the ship that the Defender is supposed to protect, the Banu Merchantman. Now, the Banu Merchantman, of course, is a traveling, you know, market for the Banu. If you haven't seen the interiors of it, it is somewhat of a shop that is going to be flying around, not unlike the new Kraken. And we'll get to that on the Drake Day, but... This is kind of the originator of that concept. This is the originator of that idea. Now, unfortunately, the Banu Merchantman has actually been teased as going into production. CIG has talked about this before in the past. You may remember that going all the way back to 2015, you know, when CIG said, oh, we're going to be working on the Caterpillar, we're going to be working on the car to all and we're going to be working on this ship as well. And this ship has been kind of sidelined and pushed back so many times that even when people hear that it's going into production, when it does actually go into production, they're not going to believe it. I mean, you'll remember that last year's anniversary sale, we got those great images of the shops that, you know, the gray, the gray, what is it? The, not grayscale, but you know what I'm talking about. The arts, you know, when they haven't textured it at all and they were kind of like spacing things out to see what the shop was going to look like. Those shots came out around the time of the Banu Merchantman probably led a lot of people to think that it was actually something that they were actively working on, which they were not. And um, a lot of people were kind of getting really excited thinking the Banu Merchantman was in production. A few people might have bought the ship thinking they were going to get it relatively soon, and that has not been the case. As a cargo hauler, I think it's going to be a strong cargo hauler. As a mobile shop, I think it's going to be a cool idea. Plenty of room for RP and fun and interaction with the universe. I think that it's going to be a cool ship. The biggest challenge that the Banu Merchantman faces is trying to edge some of these other ships out in order to get its turn at becoming flight ready. The only upside to its, you know, the, the length of time that it has taken to actually produce this ship is the fact that it is going to benefit from a lot of the mistakes made with earlier ships. So there's probably going to be a lot of benefit there when the Merchantman finally does make it into the game. Anyways, that's the show for today. Tomorrow, another manufacturer. We'll do this all over again. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.
you, thank you for watching. So, so, so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.